Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm gonna go back to a tried and true design, a marbled buttercream transfer method with an isomalt bowl topper. And this time I am also doing some isomalt balls or spheres to finish off the decoration. Now I am measuring out how tall and wide I need this acetate sheet to be to wrap around my cake and be tall enough to transfer the buttercream marbling. Then I'm just gonna cut it down to size. I always add an extra inch or two to the width and the, the height to make sure that I have enough because you can always trim it down once it's on the cake. Now for this one I'm doing a more, um, not so much of a blended marbling. I wanted the colors to be more separate but still flow together so I am kind of going on and just using my offset spatula to smear some of this red on the acetate sheet first. Now I wanted to have some white peeking through all these colors but I also wanted to do the more than just two colors so I did a lighter version of this I'm gonna call it, call it a raspberry red. See there you can see the beginnings of it. A raspberry red. I added some pink and some purple to my red. And then the lighter color is the same thing, just a lightened up version. I added more of the white buttercream to it to uh, get that lighter shade. So they're still in the same family, just a few shades lighter than each other. One is a few shades lighter than the other. And then I just used that fan brush to kind of speckle in some more of the color so that it is more of a marbled technique. And then when I'm adding the color, I'm just piling or loading up my palette knife and just putting it down on the acetate sheet without spreading it around too much. Um, you can blend or smooth out the back side of it once you get it on. The the point of all of this is to keep your colors from blending in too much on the opposite side of this acetate sheet. When you pick it up, that is your design that you're gonna see actually wrapped around your cake. This is the part here that's going to go against the cake. And there you can see my pattern. I like to double check it before I actually place it on the cake because once you get it on the cake, you really can't do a whole lot to change it. Now would be the time to scrape off any sections that you wanna redo. And then I just go ahead and pick it up and wrap it around my chilled and crumb coated cake. Now you wanna make sure that you get that crumb coat, that base coat of buttercream fairly level because otherwise your transfer will not want to stick onto it well. And now I place that in the freezer for a good 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes to firm up before I release that acetate sheet. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and make my isomalt decorations. Now, all I did was I used my isomalt. It's a combination of one quarter water to one part water to four parts isomalt crystals. Now you wanna bring those to a simmer and it needs to get up to 320 degrees. Then you remove it from the heat and this is when you'll add your color. Now a little color goes a long way in this isomalt. So I'm just dipping my, my uh, toothpick into my, I think it was burgundy that I used, um, food coloring, gel food coloring, and dipping that into the isomalt and then swirling it around until it's incorporated. You don't wanna add too many bubbles by over mixing with a spatula. And then I do let it set for maybe a minute to get those bubbles to subside. And once I did those spheres and put those to the side to let them come to room temperature, I added a little bit more burgundy to my isomalt to deepen it up because I wanted the bowl to be deeper, a deeper shade. And then you pour that on your silicone mat in a circular pattern, move it around just to make sure that it's more evenly coated. And, and don't put it on top of your, um, your vase or your cup, whatever you're gonna use to form your isomalt right away. Let it sit for a little bit. I should have probably let this sit for another minute. There's a very fine balance between it being too runny or too set up. And what I find is if it's a little bit more on the runny side, you can kind of mess with it like I'm doing here. Once, be careful with this because isomalt is very hot. I'm kind of used to working with it, so I kind of know 
when I can touch it. And that just comes with experience. So just be very careful if this is your first time doing it because you can get some very serious burns. Now, when those drips were dripping a little out of control, if you let it firm up just a little bit, you can use your scissors, like I'm doing right there, just to cut it off. And then you can use your fingers to kind of pat it down. But like I said, be careful. I've been doing this for a little while, so I kind of know when, to, when I can touch it. Now release these from your silicone mold, and they're going to be a little bit on the cloudy side, but we'll, we'll fix that. And then I did make some spheres with the, the darker color as well. I like to have a couple different shade depths of the same color. I think it kind of makes everything work really well together. And then I'm using my creme brulee torch to remove the bubbles. You can get some little bubbles on the surface and to clear them up. This is a helpful little tip, tip here. Now you don't want to hold it in one spot too long or you can end up making it too soft. And then I'm using some of this, um, oh, what's it called? A glaze spray. And that kind of seals them and keeps them from getting cloudy again. And then very carefully remove your silicone mat. I doubled up with my silicone mat because these are a little bit more flexible, a little bit more flimsy. You don't have to do that. If you have the more rigid silicone mats, you can use just the one. And I am just very carefully pulling the silicone away from the sides. Don't remove it all too much at one time or you will end up kind of dinging up your, um, your isomal. You don't want to break it. And then I use some of that glaze spray, confectioner glaze, I'm sorry, that's what that's called on it as well and that did help to remove some of that haziness and then once you pull it out from your cake out from the freezer very gently pull your acetate sheet away and your marble will buttercream will stay on the cake and then i'm just using a, a sharp blade to take that lip off the top you don't have to you can leave that if you want to but for this design i wanted it to be more of a level top and i'm just adding some more white buttercream to the top to just kind of finish it off now i'm adding a gold splatter this is just my gold luster dust mixed with some everclear in a thinner consistency so i can just basically throw it at the cake that's all the splatter is you're using your color and you're just splattering or throwing it at your cake randomly. And it just adds kind of a neat little finishing touch to it. Now I'm just sticking my bowl on the top with some buttercream. And then I'm using some fake flowers, some silk flowers, and just sticking those right in the cake. I've recently, okay, that's how I'm going to attach it to the side. I make a little like hairpin out of floral wire and a little buttercream and that anchors it to it. Recently, I was asked if you need to wrap your stems on, on your fake flowers. And my answer to that, honestly, is it's personal preference. I kind of feel like if you have washed them good and let them air dry, they're safe to use inside of the cake. Now, if you feel better, go ahead and wrap them in floral tape. If that makes you feel better, if you feel like your clients would appreciate that, go ahead and do it. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going ahead and using some buttercream to get the isomalt balls to stick. And then just adding a little touch of gold with some other, some gold candies. These are a hard candy. They're like very large dragées. You know, I can't do a cake without adding gold. I have a very hard time resisting. <laughs> And then I decided to go ahead and put some of the decorations on the back side also. And there you have my new version of the buttercream marbling transfer method with an isomalt topper 
and isomalt spheres with some gold accents and some artificial flowers. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.